Hello, how are you doing? Um, today we are going to start module five, which technically we are going to talk about operating system or Macintosh operating system 10 or OS 10 as we know it. The X stands for the 10 and we are going to talk about Linux. We cannot have one class talking only about Linux. Oh, that, that's too much. Um, that's why we will have a number of class, uh, you know, we will talk about the majority of them. Let me switch over here. The majority of Linux. So technically they are sharing a lot of common things between them. But um, for the sake of the class, I'm going to use only the links that Linux I have, which is technically in that screen. So just give it time to boot. Then we will talk about it when we reach it. I don't know why it's black screen. That's not a good sign. Okay. That's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. Now it's a good sign. Back to the view. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and take it, your attendance. Then we are going to talk about module six, which is next week. And I know you will hate me, but I'm I'm required by by contract to do so. So we will talk about module six, starting with Sasha. Is here, Sasha? see your name, Sasha. Nope. Dicker, yes. Alexandra. Yes. Oh, sorry, Alexandra. It's my bad. I didn't. Nicole, Nicole, us. Angel. I'm here. Dylan. Here. Uh, Gonza. Mason? I'm here. Ashley? I'm here. Julian? Here. Wesley? Here. Peyton? Here. Did I check someone absent and they are here? Gunza's not here, right? Oh, Gunza's technically um, don't count here. And uh, Sasha's here, uh, not here. Okay, so let's go ahead and start talking about what we have next module. Not this one, the upcoming one. Next module, we will have. Next module, we will have an examination. Okay. So, do you see where I say proctored? Do you see these two words? I'm going to, maybe tomorrow, I'm going to release the passwords or at least remove the passwords. However, these two exams are proctored. That means it is um, monitored. Monitored and last, you know, last semesters, last terms, um, I let the student do do it in class. Um, before I didn't do the monitoring. Now I did the monitoring. So, in order for you to start doing the examination, you need to. I don't know. This is the first time I'm using them. Smart proctoring, which is. You'll go here and you will see that you have two exams that it's monitored or or proctored. Um, written exam one and the skill test one. Now we will we will try to uh, before the end of this class remind me please um, to go through the um, practicing for the exam or at least go open the exam for you and and do the exam front front of you so you can see it, okay? 
Um, I don't mind, but technically I will do the practice rather than doing the actual exam. Because I know that you will take the screenshot. Now uh, the purpose of the exam will vanish. Okay. Uh, when you will do the exam, if you have any problem, you can email me, text me at any time. However, smart proctoring will check a lot of things. They will check for IDs. Forget what I checked. It's a lenient rather than strict. That's what I chose. So I don't know. I didn't think that. Let's go. So I did that. Continue. Open book. Continue. I didn't put anything over here. Okay, that's what they will check. They will ask you to open your webcam. They will take a screenshot a recording. They will open your mic recording options. And you need to check the room. Okay. Then you are only allowed to use one screen. You are not allowed to print. You are not allowed to use uh, Control C, Control V. Um, right click is disabled, so you cannot right click and copy the question. And you are going. We are going to block any extension. They will verify your identity by checking your ID, and that's what I selected. And um, technically, it's here the same thing for. Um, and I let you choose the time. I didn't say that I schedule you and I need to approve you. But technically, I I rather that I give you this opportunity that you schedule your uh, exams. Okay. So skill test one, we will talk about it at the end of this class. Please remind me. Don't don't forget. It's so important. However. Um, you know, written exam one, just you need to have the book. Have the book, the big one, and you should be okay. I already said it's open book, so otherwise they will call me. That's for the exams. This is for next module today, or this module, module five, we'll talk about Linux. And technically, I have Linux pulled out over here. I just put, changed my location of my camera. Over here, I have Linux. So I can pull it out. However, I couldn't link the, um, what they call it? I couldn't link my iMac and or my MacBook to, I don't, I need to have a special card, which costs a lot of money. So uh, we will use the chapter for that. Now, do um, you have any questions? No questions. Good. That's nice. Think more uh, chapter what? 17, should be. Da 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 17. Yeah, I have good, I have good memory. 15, 16, and 17. We have small chapter. We don't have a lot. So let's talk about Mac operating system 10 and Linux operating systems. And not one is multiple systems. What we have with Mac operating system, how it look like. Now, why we cover Mac, Macintosh, and we cover um, Linux at the same exact time because they fell under the same exact umbrella. They fell under the same exact main code or original code of Unix. Now, operating system 10 or also pronounced, you know, X or 10, whatever you want to call it, is a Unix based operating system that was developed by Apple for its Macintosh line of computers. We call it Mac for short. Today, the operating system known as Mac OS. This Apple operating system is the most or the second most commonly used desktop operating system. After, of course, Windows, which is Windows controlling 90% of the market and the rest is between these guys. And it's the most commonly used type of Unix Linux based operating systems. And and you may notice that they are saying desktop because if I want to talk about Android, which is also originally coded by um, Unix code, technically. So guess what? 
they will consider that part of Linux and Unix code. So they cannot in, until they specify saying desktop. So like most of other Unix Linux operating system, Mac operating system utilizes many open source projects, which is good and bad thing at the same exact time to make these core and functions for the operating system, along with a touch of Apple own customization. Now, you will ask yourself, why Apple or why companies use Linux? There's a lot of reasons, but each one, like you can hear people talking, I, I like Kali, I like to use Mint, I like to use um, Vidora, I like to use Ubuntu. Now, all of them have the customization, but all of them sharing the same exact features or not features, but the main coding. They, they differ between one and another, and we will come to it. But Macintosh or Mac was meant to have the touch of Apple, which is the, the, the crystal flat, whatever you want to call it, which technically they give you that feeling. Open source software is a software that's made freely available and it's open to outside contributors. That's the good, bad thing. Whenever you hear this word, open source code, open source code, that means the original coding of... Mason, are you good? Do you want me to call 911? He, he muted himself. So, when we talk about open source uh, operating system or open source codes, what we will have, we will have that the original code is available for anyone who wants to add, change, and, you know, do contribution to it, which is a good thing because now you have a lot of developers who can add to it the bad thing is available for also the bad guys because if they know that you are using that project and that project or that code do include um a bug into it a misconfiguration or whatever they can use it against you to sneak in and damage your computer that's a bad good thing at the same exact time so open source <laughs> Do you have a question, Mason? I'm oh, sorry. I, I don't know what's going on. It keeps on muting. Okay. I, I think I need to change the settings so student cannot unmute. Also, many parts of the operating system are open code. The operating system is not. Macintosh operating system is not open code. It's a unique to Apple release hardware. So what's the meaning of that? It will work only on Apple products. The instruction for how to deal with the hardware component is totally different. And that's why you are, you must use, you must use Apple product, and you cannot even put it on um, VMware. It's hard. You can, but it's hard. You need to you need to already have Linux, uh, Macintosh, and you take an image and you switch that DMG to ISL, then you will be able to change the configuration. Then you will be able to use it. So it's kind of complicated process. I don't want to do it. So when you, whenever you have Mac, Macintosh, it will become to pre-install. Now, I did a crazy stuff before. Um, one day I purchased um, my MacBook Pro, uh, Pro and I decided to say, hey, let's, be go, let's go ahead and 
actually request to delete the entire operating system through the codes. I can use that through codes. It's Linux based. So I use the code, it wiped the entire thing. And guess what? It boots into the BIOS and immediately say that they need to connect to the Wi-Fi. And the moment that they connected to the Wi-Fi, they said that there's a lion and it was an old um, operating system. It was lion. Then it went all the way to Mojave. Um, so let's talk about them. And we will come to it, but it updated itself. So. Operating system 10 reaches the 11th major dis uh, desktop release when Mac operating system came out and it's on, now it's on version, not 10, 14, I think either 15 or 17. 15 or 16. Because now they are on Catalina. That's what they have, that they, they now on there, they are on Catalina. So they had Mojave, then Catalina. I think if they don't have the new one. Let's see which, which one I'm using right this moment. Mm -hmm. Apple, about this Mac. Yeah, they are right this moment. They are talking or working with Catalina. What's this? Can you see? You don't see. You don't see the screen. Ah, oh, no, that's bad. You cannot see it. You cannot view it. It will dim it. Oh, yeah. I cannot show you. So let's talk about it. So they had Lion, Mountain, they name it, by the way, Lion, Mountain Lion, um, Mavericks, Yuzimti, Il Capitan, Sierra, High Sierra, Mojave, and uh, Catalina. Mac operating system is a portable, a portable operating system uh, interface compliant operating system, which means that it meets the specification and standardization of the operating system outlined by the IEEE Community Society or Computer Society and containing a you know born shell and other standard applications. I don't know what happened, but yeah. So that's what we have with Mac. So let's talk about the navigation. Now the dock, okay, or the deck, whatever whatever you want to call it. It's just like the taskbar. However, we have the launcher, which is launch, the second one from the finder. The launcher, which is launch uh, the menu, just like a menu where you can see your applications. Uh, the finder will show the desktop. This is the finder where you can go to your files, iCloud, you can go to application, desktop, just like the a window. And ab above here, we have a menu bar or a top menu bar. So the finder is where you want to go most of the time. And you can switch. Now with, with Macintosh, you can add more than one, one um, desktop if you want to, just like uh, most of Linux. And now uh, Windows 10, you have this feature where you can add more than one desktop. I don't prefer it, by the way. The, this is the when you click on launcher, this is what you see. You see the, the applications and so on. And you see the 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 the, 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 the one called launch band. Now when it comes to spotlight, it can highlight important things. It's a universal search tool that you can search everything, files and directory, as well as content, email, music, and so on. Now most of Apple product is a touch screen, most of them, right this moment currently. So they will work with more with, with um, screens. Also, the, the touchpad have the, the ability to distinguish gestures. So we have to swipe left and right. It will jump if you swipe left and right. 
to swipe uh, uh, left and right with your fingers is different than one finger, by the way. Uh, three or four fingers swipe up will give you a different thing. Bunch with a thumb uh, and a three fingers to open the launch pad. But just try it. I will tell you if it's working or not. You, you must trust me on that. So what we have, we have swipe left or right with two fingers. Come on, don't show anything. Yeah, we have it. We have something showed up, which technically um, pages will show up pages. Uh, swipe left or right with four fingers. We can switch desktop, by the way. Full screen application. I switch desktop here. Uh, three or four fingers swipe up, three or four. Yeah, the stop here, we can switch to open the mission control. Bunch with three fingers and a thumb. Nothing. Nothing. What we have? Uh, spread part finger thumbs. No, don't work. Not all of them. Zoom in. I know that zoom in, zoom out. Tap and tap for right click and so on. Basic system usage and updates backups. Um, when Mac. Operating system start, you may be presented with a login screen. Most of the operating system do now. If the user uh, account have a password enabled, you must log in using the password to, to log into the account. Um, what we have more, the Mac operating system come bundled with a wide range of free software or software for general reuse as well as system upkeep to include an office productivity suite or suit, commonly known as iWork, which include a word processor called Pages, a presentation application called Keynote, and a separate sheet application called Numbers, just like Excel. This productivity application are Apple answer to the popular uh, Microsoft Office suit. However, if you want to use it, you have the, 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 the um, Mac a version of Office if you want to. Mac operating system also come with iCloud, iCloud based services offering storage application support and services uh, or you know syncing of content, photos, email and bookmarks, documents and more between multiple operating systems, Mac OS as well as iOS, which for is iPhone. And there's also for Apple devices or Windows devices. It's, a, it's where you can keep your backup. Uh, App Store is where my, uh, where Apple control which application can be installed on your device. There's other ways that you can install devices which Apple do not recommend and do not like to do, but there's a lot of people do use applications for something valley. I, I did not use Apple for a long period of that of time. App Valley, if you if you want to. Uh, I didn't tell you that name. It's not App Valley, by the way. So, what we have more, we can share a screen of Mac. If you have screen sharing turned on, another Mac user who is on the same network can view and view uh, an even control of the display of computer, uh, not computer. System updates. Um, the only thing bad with Apple, they are forcing their uh, users to buy the new, newer, um, devices by limiting the update. So technically what they do, they will not give you the opportunity to update after a certain amount of time or copies where you will be forced to switch to a new machine because it's so slow. And they already mentioned that they are going to intentionally slow the devices, old devices. 
It is easy to recover your uh, previously purchased application through the App Store, but uh, the App Store is not a backup system for that you need to use a time machine. I hate the time machine, but time machine is a, a bundle application on Mac that enable you to fully uh, full and increment system backup to an, no, not time machine, I hate, I hate something. Access key, something like that. So time machine is the backup machine. Force to quit is one of the things that you can right click on any application not working or you go to the menu bar, go to click on the Apple sign and you will find in the drop, drop down where it's a force to quit, up, quit application where you force them to quit applications. Just like how we have in Linux, we can use commands to check on the top um, processor and we can kill that process by like, just like how ending a task, we can kill the process and any underneath processes will be dead immediately. Uh, remote disk, Windows, uh, not Windows, Apple do not like to have a disk for Macintosh, but however, they give you the opportunity to, to create one which is technically remote disk. Management and troubleshooting tools. You can go to system preferences, just like the control panel, where you can manage your entire um, device, as we call it. Save mode, sometimes called save boot, allows Mac computer system to boot with a slimmed down version of operating system. The software is the normally loaded automatically is not loaded. User in, installed phones are not uh, loaded and so on. So technically that's the base operating system. Also including with um, Mac, there's a folder called utility. It's not the control panel. It's just the extra, um, application that you can use to manage your um, device. Like, for example, we have a, a activity monitor, which monitors the, the services and so on. Console, which is technically you can um, one centralized place to find system and application logs. Kernel panic, which is the highest uh, error in Mac, which is called kernel panic. Uh, the console is good for troubleshooting kernel pan panel uh, panic, which is a critical system error that is operating system cannot recover from. That's why I said critical. So whenever you have this word kernel panic, guess what? Your machine will need to be rebooted, not rebooted, but resetted everything, which has happened in the operating system. The Mac reboots to return the stable state or state try finding the cause of the kernel panic and so on. System information will give you information about your system hardware. Keychain, I hate it so much. It will keep asking you why I hate it for one reason. It will ask you to store the password. In order for it to store the password safely, you need to have a password. So you will type a password. Now you have a password, you type the password so you can save the password that you just used. Whenever you want to log in, you need to put the, the other password that you put so you can use the password of the device that you're logging to. Something is messed up. So yes, I hate this. It's called keychain. However, if you went in to the folders because there's an opportunity where you can see the folders and files of the application and you wipe the, 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 um, the, the directory that hold the keychain files, you will have a kernel panic, by the way the operating system will stop. But if you delete the content of it, it will keep working. But the, that application will not show anymore, which is the keychain. See, they will store everything. They, you will hate yourself, but that's how you store it. Disk utility is where you can check and work with your disks that's loaded onto your machine. Bootcam, which technically it's a boot loading utility designed to assist with partitioning, installing and supporting and running of the Windows or another Mac. So technically, why I buy Mac $3,000 device so I can use Windows? Question mark, right? I can go buy something which is much cheaper. 
An installation requires a USB flash drive and at least 16 gigabyte of free space, Windows installation ISO file and DVD installer, and a minimum of 30 gigabyte of free space on a hard drive. The bootcamp application guides you through the process of repartitioning, repartitioning your hard drive. Terminal, which technically you are going to use almost the same exact command for Unix. Uh, rather than using the GUI, you are going to use the commands and you are going to type. For example, if you went in and you type PWD, which is print working directory, it will provide you the path of your working directory. C, which is list of the current directory content. CD, change, uh, change between directories. Touch, which is create a file, mkdir, create directory, cp, which is copy, mv, move, rm, remove, ls, list, and as you go through. So, introduction to Linux. Let me switch you to one, one thing, just for a reason. Have you ever worked with Linux before? No one? Anyone, did you work with Linux before? Yeah. Yeah. Who said we yes? Them on our, Dylan, we used them on our configuration laptops uh, in Osan, Korea. Oh, okay. Do you, did you work with Kali? No. Do you know what, which, what they use Kali for? I do not. Kali is used. I will let you read the inside, but just let me see where, where this is showing up. It's not showing anything. Come on. What's over here? So, share content, third screen. Now, this is Kali. Can you read this? It's offensive security. This operating system is mostly used with hacking cracking stuff so technically you can go and request to um to listen for example to the okay i'm going to listen to my communication it's going to slow my communication down so anything happening on my network right this moment going to show up i forget uh okay uh, i need to know my my uh, my uh, the name of it which one is working Uh, IP. Let me put it. Sudo if config. So EF zero. So let's go ahead. Clear. I will let you see something. Sudo dump. Now everything happening on my network is being listed in front of you. On my entire network, that means in my home, my devices talking between each other, my devices connecting outside is being listed over here. So I can collect this information and I can pull it and I can um, use it to find out what people are doing and how they are doing it. So that's kind of advanced uh, level. So let's be clear of this and let's talk about Linux. Now, this is Kali Linux. is used by for security. There's a number of operating systems. You see it over here, Kali. So we have Ubuntu, Debian, Mint, which is almost like Windows. If you have a 32-bit operating system, if you have an operating, uh, not operating system, 32-bit system, or like hardware, or um, a machine that 
any more windows on it you you can put on it mint it will work fine like um windows and there's an application called wine just like the drink wine w-i-n-e and you can use um any application for for windows to work on mint choose red hat vidora send os i use it on my servers i have two servers online i use sent os gento and arch as well as cali so let's talk about linux operating system Linux released in 1991, developed by Louis Travolts. So as a student, uh, a widely used operating system platform that is similar to trade uh, mark Unix and a group of operating systems that grow from the AT&T development, which was put for free for public 60 something. I'm not remembering 1960 something. It, it is meant to be free, open source operating system that everyone can use, contribute, and modify as needed. Because of this, it's a widely used in many different areas of technology, such as such as servers, desktop, embedded systems, smartphones. It is also most commonly uh, or most POSI X compliance, so technically has a lot of things. Uh, some, some, uh, also some of the concepts that you have already learned in the lesson about Mac is available in Linux. The terminology of Linux can be confusing for some who is new to it. The name Linux refers to the operating system kernel. Uh, kernel is the heart of an operating system. It's, it acts. Uh, as the controller and inter, uh, interrupter of nearly everything in the system. Technically, kernel is the part where part of the software we're taking the code, the zeros and one, and then implementing the hardware. So that's why it's so important. So hardware and software can interface and work together in control of things such as memory management, a prefer and all allocation of system resources. So we have these packages. So technically this picture is for, um, oh, you don't see it, sorry. So this picture, I was reading from here. So this picture uh, is Ubuntu. This disk is the Kali. And this is the Kali F, F force, I think. X F C yeah it's it has number of um desktop one of them is X F C E which is the one that I always like and I will always use and by the way why I like it because um I can switch it I can hide it I I use it for a lot of security stuff so technically I I have a combination of keys that I have already enabled to switch it to Windows it's the theme by the way so technically you look at it this Windows and it's not. It's a Kali working what we call it um, undercover. So we have an application we can use. I can I, I use it a lot um, where you can go and say undercover. And you just switch to undercover mode and it will switch. It. So technically it's creepy. But we use it for a lot of reasons. Yeah, that's that's Kali. I like it. I respect it. So each one is different. I, I my majority of usage is security because my degree is in security. I do a lot of security stuff consulting. So I use a lot of Kali stuff. And we have like a really bunch of lists. I can have a special application for gathering information. I can do a vulnerability test. I can go to check for um, some specific website applications, databases applications, password attacks, wireless attacks, reverse engineering attacks, exploiting attacks, sniffing, which technically I can sniff what's going on in my network, just like how I did. What I what else I did is called TCB dump. I can export uh, exploit uh, ports or you know do whatever i want to do social engineering gather information about people i can do so each one is used for majority however 
each one will like it differently. So the most one is used is, is Ubuntu. So let's read about a little bit about, uh, let me switch it. I don't want you to uh, keep looking at it. You'll feel scared, I know. Let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about uh, Ubuntu and talk about Linux. There are many types of graphical user interfaces for Linux uh, as Genome, KDE, and X. FCE and Cinnamon, which is for Mint, each has a unique interface of creating and tools. Utility, uh, Unity is the name of the graphical user interface in Ubuntu. It has some similar similarities with the interface on Mac operating system, so they create almost the same thing. So we have uh, Launcher as a shortcut bar for the left side of on the screen. Um, so technically, it's just like the dock. We have it in Mac, but rather underneath, it's on the side. Panel, which is the main menu or menu main bar on, on the top, just like the uh, menu bar at the top in um, in Mac. We have something called Dash, which is a universal search tool that's built in in the launcher, which will give you the opportunity to search the entire system without even going into the inside the system. Basic system usage updates and backups, normal useful use bundle with an Ubuntu for managing the system. Some of these uh, are you know, best used with the GUI through the everything you can do through on a command prompt. So you have a bunch of things. For example, I think this is a G parted window, which is technically for uh, creating partitions, G parted. The best example of this is Gparted, which is a disk management that's allow you to create, delete, and resize all partitions on a physical disk. EXT3, EXT4 are the extension, a third extension and the fourth extension or generation of the extended file system, which is introduced journaling. That is the capability of file system to track changes to the file system can recover from power failure and crashes. The fourth generation also extend the file system, which contain failures such as journaling volume support up to one tera, uh, extra byte and file um, size up to 16 terabyte and so on. Also in, in Ubuntu, we have something called uh, software updater. We don't have this in Kali. We have this called um, software management, I think software management or app management in Mint. But here we have something called software uh, updater. Also, we have something called Ubuntu Software Center, which is this one, which you have updates and so on. In order for me to update my Kali, I need to put code, which is say, hey, go ahead and update Kali and we'll update Kali. Now, Kali will use a lot of commands. I can go ahead, let me switch you. So you can see, I can uh, request my, this to show up and I can say, hey, print working directory and immediately will tell me my directory. I will say, hey, go ahead and list whatever I have. It's going to list whatever I have. I can say, hey, go ahead and go to the mm, whatever download. Let me see what I just downloaded two days ago. And list. And there's nothing. Why? Change document. Uh, too many arguments. Why? Oh, that's why. DOC. And this. Nothing. Simply. So I think I am there. I am here. So uh, shut down will shut down the uh, or restart the system. Pass P A S S pass W D, which is set password for a user. SU switch users if config going to show you the configuration of the network if config and, and what's this oh that's why right. 
sometimes I need to take privilege of administrator. So this is the configuration of my uh, my network. I can type clear to clear out my screen. IW config, which is shown in the network interface information wireless adapter. So IW config. Yeah, I forget. SUDU. Uh, no, no wireless extension available because I'm using a, a machine. Um, oh, see packages. I will do what, something for front of you. I will say ABT get as how you have it in the page. ABT get update. Oh, sorry. Update. And it will update to, to pull out the update, not upgrade the operating system. If I said upgrade, it will upgrade it. But if update, just updating the software. Let me switch you back. So we have this file system back. We talked about this. These are commands you can use it. Copying data, DD is a you know way that you can copy data from one place to another. Remember one thing: the argument you need to have a syntax, so you have the code, the command, the argument, and the option. So if I'm copying something, so I will say copy the source and the destination. Remember this. Mac OS Linux base best practices, you need to make sure that you keep it updated, make sure that it's not causing a lot of errors, make sure that you um, back up your data and so on. This is, this is the end of the chapter for now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, take this away and let's go ahead and see your practice. Number one, I need to do something very important. I need to enable you to access to access the session. Yeah, it's too far for me to see. Ah, someone doing the same exact. Some student doing their work on uh, homework while I'm giving lecture. That's not nice. It's respectful. Uh, user account, no. Classes. This is the current software. Edit. And no expired. Submit. Okay. That I'm going to remove it after um, after you complete the exam. So October 19th, you will not see it anymore. Now let's go ahead to module to the practice of of skill test one. So click over here. Go to uh, module five practice. Click over here, download the file, just like how you will do in your exam. Open that file. Where is it open? I don't know. So it will say that's what you need to do. Let's go ahead and create a session for me. Um, reserve, schedule, a lab. So technically, you should go to the software assessment when you do the skill tests. So you schedule a software assessment. It will not open a GUI, so it will open only a graphical interface, uh, a terminal. It will not open um, GUI. So I schedule this for myself. That's like how you do it yourself. And I schedule this is the student doing his work. While I'm giving lecture, I can know. I know everything. Okay. Give it time. 
So this is the, the information. I'm going to put it on another screen so I can read as I go through. Hands-on test one, create. If they want you to create a folder called Go, a folder called Fish, and a file in the Go folder called file1.txt. The content of the file are as follow, help me. Let's go ahead and create this. So we will go to the windows. The save mode will open. It should open a save mode, so a black screen. Okay, open. I was checking my phone. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a folder called um, Go. So I'm what I'm going to say. I'm going to say M. Oh no, M K D I R. Go. And now I have. Oh my god, all these files available over here. That's that's really close. Cool. That's wrong, by the way. However, why is it open like this? Let me show I'm going to restart it. It's wrong to, to open like this. Or off, or off. Apology. Like this. No. Let us go to apology. This. Or it's on, or on. There's something weird. Should not happen like this. Come on. So just give it time, let's do it. Come on. So, MK, DIR, go. It's already created. MK, fish. Then we are going to a file in the go folder called file text one. The contents of type, help me. File one dot txt. That is correctly. OK. 
okay type file one oh where to create it the go so change directory go there you are there's nothing type file one.txt help me make sure I need to double. Okay. Eco, sorry, wrong window. Eco, help, help me. File one dot txt should be like this. So DIR. Now we have that file that has the content. What next? Copy file one to fish folder. So copy file one dot txt. Where to go? Fish. And let's tr let's go there. Change fish dir and the file's not here. What I did wrong. Copying file. Make sure. Let's go back. Change directory zero zero dot dot go dir. The files here. Copy file one dot txt to fish should be like this. Oh, copy cannot be done. Let's find another one. Incorrect. Copy. Source destination. I'm copying source destination, so it should be correct. I'm always learning something new. Oh, the entire thing. That's not nice. That's not nice. C columns slash. Well, that's why I knew why. Fine bath. Okay, no big deal. Yes, I use the wrong slash. So if I go to right this moment, change fish and dir, it's going to list the file that I just copied to. Good. So copy, we already did that. Assign file one txt file and go folder a read only attribute. So I'm going to switch my directory back to go. So cd slash dot dot slash go and i will be in go and i will say a attribute att r i b assigning which is plus sign come on plus sign read only read only to file one dot xt and press enter oh sorry using the wrong one Now the file has a read-only attribute. 
prove that to the teacher you have work all without the GUI. So technically you need to DIR and you will show that you're working over here or use another way that you take a screenshot to the teacher proving that you did not use the GUI. Start up and, and the second configuration, you will go to topology, you go to the other one. Then click on the start word bad. So start word bad. What is that? Word pad. And use task manager to stop application. So task manager to stop the application. Launch a document. And technically, whenever you say uh, prove it, right this moment, there's no way that you can prove it because it's closed. But just before you press and task, take a screenshot. And you send it to me. You should also be able to locate and document technical information on computer like RAM, CPU, computer name, and uh, operating system version, and so on. How you can locate this, you will go to system. And you will find a lot of information. Are you with me? Okay. The last one, you use monitoring troubleshoot uh, tools, including event viewer, task viewer, MMC device, and, and so on. So you can work. So technically what you need to do is um, computer management. Sorry, computer management. And you will manipulate this based on what they want you to do in the exam. So task viewer, if, uh, event viewer, schedule a task at 4 p.m. I'm not telling you the answers or the questions. Users, local performance, device manager, disk management, I don't know. Then you will prove it and send me send it back to me. Questions? Questions? No questions? Okay then. See you next week. No, no, just wait. Don't see I don't see you next week. Uh let me see your your um your your uh, syllabus. October 5th and 12th, no virtual meeting. Student must complete the exam in appropriate settings. So I will meet you again over here on a virtual meeting on the 19th. Questions? No. No questions? Then see you on the 19th. Good luck in the exams. If you have any problem, call me immediately.